It pleased the Lord that uh, my day should be here two times this Sunday. So it, I know it might not be that pleasant for you to watch again and again the same person. But uh, it just pleased the Lord, so we just have to bear that. Uh, but nonetheless, we don't have the same scripture portion. We will look at uh, Ephesians today. Nathan Parkai, Prabhu Maniki Siddha Parchina Bhagamu, Epistle Class in a Patrika, Nalu Vajayamu, Padigad Ninchi, Irvai Muda Vachnamaloni Bhagani, Panam Chadivi. We will spend some time trying to look at the scripture and look to the Lord for the word that He has. They would not call that change Navaki Bhagam Kodanavitamai, Epistle Class in a Patrika, Nalu Vajayam, Padigad Ninchi, Irvai. Nalgo Vachnum Loni Bhagan Chadukini Manamu Vati Parchak Loni Bhagan I will just request you to please read the alternate verses Vachnum Venpati Vachnum Padir Vachnum Chodhanu Marj Marji Chadukna This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having, having an understanding, understanding darkened, being alienated from the life, life of God, God because of the ignorance that is in them, them because, because of the blindness in their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that he put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Shall we pray and look to the God of this beginning? I will pray and On the floor, I'm up here for low tendi. You can sign call some you, say some in some yanni, pardon the other. You can walk him che, my brother, me che, the shinko vertical, nine of the club vertical, balapach vertical, northern apach vertical, Irma and Green China, airport and veteran Panana was to catch a rich rich now. Walk him in the devil, Jeevaku, Marcy, and you in the devil. On the day, Nitya Jeevaku, Martha Lugala, near the Tapa, Maria near the Kuadaka on the day, Ashpurchu, Tajalaga, Nisani Kuchna Mamuni Yap in Cheskarmani, Ayokini, Pakshan Nilabadinan, Nisilu Chart and Maru Chesi, Nama Perke, Nidachi in Chinavaki Baganche, Naina, Nitinan Mam Dashinchi, Sandinchi, Nutanapachi, Balapachi, Aritya Narchkun Tuknu, Yakat Mache, Maprova, Mamani Vakilo. Tiru Pachmani, Maprava, Niyaka Krupache, Nadkimpache Mani, Rajas Nami Daigalastan Ki, Om London Yap Chepkin Chundiga, Atamata Mire Matla Admani, Yesu Christ Parishit Namlo, Pradhin Chweir Pinchanan Kundi. I also have two jobs today. One is to bring forth the message and also to translate. I have been translating the last two weeks and I will try my best to do justice to do it in Telugu and English. Um, so for today, um, I want us to rem be reminded of, of uh, the journey that we began in uh, in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians class in Patrikaloni, Bhagani, Nalgo Adhyamlo Bhagani, Dhyanishtamu, Poinsari, Vaki Parchirilo, uh, and I have given primarily 
from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 to 16. That's what we have looked at. Uh, today we will continue that journey. Ephesians Krasna Patrika Mari Sangamu Christu Yoka Marmamalu Bairi Parche Pramukkiman Patrika Ga Devudu Vakyamuro Manukarku Pondu Parche Inchishunadu Jesus, our God has kept for us the epistle of Ephesians to reveal to us the great mysteries of Christ and his church. And so when we take a look at, uh, I, I got this picture online and I found it very apt for us. It says, I know you might not be able to fully read what it says, but it says underneath the title Ephesians, it says, my life is church. That's also a good way to see the book of Ephesians. It is not just abstract theory of what church is all about, but it is exactly what my life and his church, that is the church of Jesus Christ is, and how they are so united, which Paul says is the mystery in Ephesians 5, 20, uh, 30th verse or so, he says, the mystery of the union of Christ and his church. That uh, seems to be as a resonating theme in and through this great letter. If there is any place that Apostle Paul had spent great amount of time serving the Lord with great tears and with the power of the Spirit of God ministering for almost like 18 months at, at, in a continual, uh, continual season, it was at Ephesus that he did so. Uh, and so, when he writes this letter to the church at Ephesus, he takes up this task of trying to bring deep mysteries of God's church, that the church of Jesus Christ, and also how every individual, that is you and me, are a member of the body of Christ that God is building in this world. Uh, last time when I began, I said it is also apt to say that the letter of Ephesians is a, is, a, is a consummation or it is a way of expansion of one of the statements of Jesus Christ which is, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If there is one powerful entity that is there in this world which the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, to which God has given power. Of course we know Jesus and God, when they stand against the gates of hell, the gates of hell would not prevail against it. But to his church, that is the body of Christ that you and I belong, God has given this supernatural power that the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church that God is building. And such is the, such is the uh, gloriousness of the church of God or the church of Jesus Christ. So, when I began uh, last week, for those that might not have been there, uh, we've looked at verses 1 to 16, where we spoke about growing together into Christ. Church is not about one particular person. It is not, uh, it is not about one particular family. It is not about uh, charisma of a, of a preacher or of a mu music uh, pastor or of a musician. It is about the body of Christ that we belong to into which we are growing constantly. We all are as members in the body of Christ growing together into the likeness in reflecting who Jesus Christ is. And uh, that is what we were looking at uh, at, a, at a high level. Uh, we also looked at as we uh, as we see very briefly that the first three chapters of this great letter, Paul focuses so much upon the doctrines and then the rest of the three chapters he focuses upon the duty. Or in other words, he focuses upon the indicatives and then he gives the imperatives. Or he focuses upon the principles and then he gives what is to be practiced out of it. In, uh, in Telugu, if you were to take note, Madhati Mood Adhyayalu Prabhu Bodha Prabhu Yaka Bodha Nagarincha Apostle and Paul Chepchu 
తదనంతరము ఆఖరి మూడు అధ్యాయాలు దాని నుంచి రావాల్సిన విధిని గురించి మాట్లాడుతున్నాడు ప్రభు యొక్క సూచనల గురించి మొదటి మూడు అధ్యాయాలు చెప్పు తదనంతరం మూడు మిగిలిన మూడు అధ్యాయాల్లో ఆయన ఇచ్చు ఆజ్ఞలను గురించి చెప్చున్నాడు మొదటి మూడు అధ్యాయాల్లో ఆయన యొక్క సూత్రాల గురించి చెప్పు తదనంతరం మూడు అధ్యాయాల్లో ఆయన మన కొరకై దాచించిన అనుసరణ గురించి ఆయన చెప్చు ఉన్నాడు సో వెన్ వీ టేక్ నోట్ ద బుక్ ఆఫ్ ఎఫిసెన్స్ ఆర్ ద లెటర్ ఆఫ్ ఎఫిసెన్స్ కెన్ బి డివైడెడ్ ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ ఇన్ హాఫ్ ద ఫస్ట్ త్రీ చాప్టర్స్ ఆర్ మోర్ ఆఫ్ ఎ థియరిటికల్ నేచర్ and then the rest three are more practical in nature uh, and so we see also as a major theme that this letter focuses upon two aspects of the church uh, the eternal character and then the temporal conduct isinga sangam yokka shashvatamaina did i put that uh, okay i put it on on the top it talks about సంఘం యొక్క శాశ్వతమైన స్వభావం గురించి అలాగే సంఘం యొక్క తాత్కాలిక ప్రవర్తన గురించి ఆయన మాట్లాడుతూ ఉన్నాడు దేర్ ఇస్ అన్ ఇటర్నల్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఆఫ్ ద చర్చ్ విచ్ ఇస్ ఇన్ ద పాస్ట్ హీ కన్సీవ్ ద చర్చ్ ద చర్చ్ ఈస్ గాడ్స్ ఐడియా ఇట్ ఈస్ గాడ్స్ ప్లాన్ అండ్ పర్పస్ హీ హ్యాస్ పర్పస్ డెట్ విత్ అన్ ఇటర్నల్ ప్లాన్ ఇన్ వర్సెస్ వన్ చాప్టర్ వన్ వర్స్ ఫోర్ వి రీడ్ దట్ ఇన్ ద ప్రెసెంట్ హీ ఈస్ కన్స్ట్రక్టింగ్ ఇట్ not only he has conceived it in the past he is constructing it this is the age of the church when the body of christ is being constru- constructed ephesians 1 chapter verses 18 19 chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 talks about how jesus is bringing us who are dead in our sins and trespasses and making us be seated along with him in christ jesus and it is with those redeemed people regenerated people he is making this church and so in future he is going to bring it to consummation that is he is going to bring past the eternal purpose aina paripurnata yokka paripakvata ko sangani iskun raane ichunadu so when we take a look at this we see that the church has these two facets the eternal character and then the temporal conduct and so in the temporal conduct we looked at briefly that in chapter 4 by the way the temporal conduct focuses upon the last three chapters which is what we have to live out in a practical way as our duty as the commandments or the imperatives that flow from our character and so in chapter 4 onwards paul focuses upon three things that we see he focuses upon the construction of the church which is how he has equipped the church with so many of the servants that would minister in the church with gifts that he has poured out in the church he is building the church and then the second one is he is giving us a testimony to confess in the renewed living that we are to live out by being filled with the holy ghost we are to be a testimony we are to be those that would confess who we belong to and then finally we also have a conflict or a war in this world in ephesians chapter 6 it talks about the armor of god with which we need to be ready to face the conflict that we are certainly going to have in this world moving forward in the last uh, sermon i talked about primarily focusing upon chapter 4 verses 13 to 16 and quickly i would want to summarize that so in chapter 4 we see verse 6 uh, onwards actually verse 6 and 7 it says one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all and then he goes on to give in verse 7 but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of christ and then in verse 11 he also goes on to say he gave some apostles some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers and why did he give he gave for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ so here we see that there is an allocation or there is a giving up giving of gifts 
and equipping of the church that has happened in the first phase, we, we see Yesu Prabhuvaru Mari Sangani Tane Tana Yoka Chitamlo Katutalo Aina Bahumanam like a Aina Let me get that verse in verse seven. We read Aide Aina Manalo Pratiwanaki Krishna on Grinchu Varama Yoka Parimana Chopana Krupa Yebadanu and then he goes on to say in verse eleven that for the perfecting of the saints Manamandramu Kristu Yaka Sampurna to Samana Maya Sampurna to Kalavar Mai, Vinunamitamai, Aina Kondarni, Apost to Lugano, Suvati Kulugano, Mari, we have that verses mixed up in verse 13. We see that Kondarni Upadesha Kulugano, Kapa Lugano, Aina Anugrain Chenu, Aina Anugrain Chutra, Karimnu, Manchustona, Rundadi, Aina, he also, after having allocated the gifts for edification, he also has us for identification of those gifts for operation. Why are we to identify our gifts? Just so that we can say, you know, I have so and so gift. Or we can go and talk about our gift and the gifting that we might have received from God. And it is not so, but we are given the gifts. We are to identify the gifts so that we operate in them. That we, that we live out that express purpose for which we have been recreated. In verse 10 we read Ephesians chapter 2 that God has made us his workmanship created in Christ Jesus onto good works that we would be edifying the body of Christ. And so we've taken a look at all these and, and in that plan of edification that God has for this church we saw the four aspects in verses 13, 14, 15 and 16 that why God is edifying us First and foremost, he's edifying us for the glorious plan that he has, which is to bring us to glory, glorification. Verse 13 talks about it. It talks about how we are being perfected. And in verse 14, how we are to be preserved for glorification, for preservation, for proclamation, and also for unification. We we've taken a look at it at a surface, and uh, I would want to leave it there, move forward to to our portion today, which is in verses 17 onwards. Let's go to verse 17. So, as he is writing to the church of Ephesus, uh, the church at Ephesus, he is also writing to the local church that you and I belong to. By the way, when God has purpose with regards to his church, the church is not just the universal church of Christ to which all the local churches belong, but also it operates in a local level. Sangamu, Sarvatrika Sangamga, Matrame Kaka, Stanika Sangamga, Mari Prati Stalamandu, Aya Stalalu, Prabhu Sheriranga Manukuri Napadala, Mari Prabhu Taneka Raja Vyatikai, Manani Vadukunchu, Tanache. But in Nirmimpa Vartanki, I like Atmache Nantrikapada Nashpurthunar. So here we see that in verses 17 onwards, he's talking to every individual in the local church. He's talking to every individual, saying that there was a state from which you and I have been brought out of. Sangamga, Andulo Sabhiluga, Okari Kokrum. Prabhu Sangamlo Abhyam Laga Manuntu Vandaga Manamu Manayakka Munupati Sthithini Ayana Gnyapakam Chesi Tadduwara Manakyobadchuna Nuthana Sthithini Gnyapakam Cheskani Melagavalsini Yaka Ausarata Undi Yani Devudu Tanakku Markin Dwara Ayana Gnyapakam Chesu Apostolai Paul Dwara Padihedo Vachinam Ninchi Rayan Chana Bhagamnu Manam Chadu Chuna So today we will focus on 17 to 24, where it talks primarily about us being renewed and recreated in Christ. Christ lo mari tirigi nootananga swistim pabaruta, alage nootananga janmim pabaruta ane vishyani. Tadwara manam eritka ilokumlo jivin chali ane vishyalnu. When we look at 
how we are renewed and recreated in Christ, there's a, a great implication. There are great implications that flow out of it. That is, that is divided, that can be divided into three portions for us today. Uh, verses 17 to 19, it talks about how our past life is. In verses 20 and 21, it gives us a bridge uh, that we will look at. Uh, and then verses 23 to 24, actually the whole of the portion is going to flow in the same context. But I will stop for the lack of time today till just verses 24. Uh, so verses 17 onwards, Telulu Chautana. Kabati Anya Janalu Narchukana Natlu, meaning Mirata Narchukana Valadani, Prabhu Nandu, Sakshamich Chunan, Varaite Andakaras Maina Manasu Galavare, Tamakrudaya Kartinya Valana, Amalona Agnana Cheta, Devani Valana Kalu Jivam Lonandi, Veru Parchapanavare, Tamuk Manasuna Kalagina Vyatat Nanusarinchi, Narchukan Chunan. Here, when we read the verse 17, Padhyad Ochanuman Chadivina Bhagan Gamanich Natlaite, Anya Janulu Nadichukuna Natlu. Yavaru i Anya Janulu. Who are those that are being called as Gentiles? Oftentimes, when we think about Gentiles, the very word that comes to our mind is those that are not Jews. That is also true and right in one sense. But it is not true in all of the senses that we might have to consider. Because those that are Gentiles are actually those that were alienated from God. And who are alienated from God? All of us. Yavaru Deviniche Veru Parchapadaru Padir Padinda Vachnuman Gamanich Natlaite Majilo Bhagam Devani Varna Kalugu. The first and first characteristic of a Gentile is those that are being alienated from God. The second characteristic is that those that are under the wrath of God. Matamadati, Devuni Varna Kalu Jeevam Lunchi Veru Parchabadina Vare, Untunaru Rundavati. Devani Valla Kalugu Ukratapu Patrulai Navarga Unturnar. Isn't that? Ilokum law, Devani Kuakim Laman Parsi in Chesna Pudu, Israel Prajalu, Pratekinga, they would independently come and choose them. God has chosen Israel to be a special nation through which He can bring forth His promise. Not that by that choosing of Israel, they are, they are redeemed in a, in a true sense. But even though they have come to having God as their, as their true God, they are still alienated from God, which is what we read as a confirmation in Romans chapter 1, verse 23, Romans chapter 2, verse 23, and Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Let's read that uh, verse very quickly. Romans chapter 1, verse 23 talks about the alienation of those that are not Jews. Yudhulu Kani Var Eritika Devaniki Duras to Layu Naro, Romit Krasna Patrika Mother Tatya Nirvay Muda Vachnu Mati Yapun Chestundi. Waru Akshay Maku Akshay Dabu Devani Mahimanu, Kshaya Maku Manishlay Pyu, Pakshulay Pyu, Chetushpa the Jentu Lay Pyu, Purubulay Pyu, Pretimas Swarupamaga, Marchari. Isinga Yudhulu Kani Varu Erakanga Devani Mahimanu Mari. Ihaloka Samanamaina Var Bastulia Mahima Kumarchi, David Kuduras Layaro, Yapun Chestunri, Rundava Ajayimu, Irvay Muda Vachnumlo, Yudilga Manavaru, David Keritka Duras Layaro, Yapun Chestunri, Dharma Shastram and Dachi in Chenevu, Dharma Shastram Miratavalna, Devani, Aumana Parchadrava. The Jews have been given this precious privilege of receiving the law and receiving the promises, but yet they still had their hearts far from God. And which is why in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 it says, All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. 
అటు యూదుడైనను అన్యుడైనను లేక యూదుడు కానివాడైనను మరి ఏ భేదను లేదు అందరూ పాపం చేసి దేవుడు అనుగ్రహించి మహిమను పొందలేకపోతున్నారు అట్టి స్థితిలో నీవు నేను ఉంటూ ఉండగా మన మునుపటి స్థితి అట్టి వారమై ఉంటూ ఉండగా మనం జీవించిన జీవితం యొక్క వివరణ ఆ భాగంలో మనం చూస్తున్నాం వర్స్ సెవెంటీన్ అండ్ ఎయిటీన్ అండ్ నైన్టీన్ పాల్ గివ్స్ ఎ బ్రీట్ అకౌంట్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ పాస్ట్ లైఫ్ ఈవెన్ దో యువన్ ఐ హ్యావ్ కమ్ టు జీసస్ క్రైస్ దిస్ ఈస్ అవర్ ఇన్నేట్ నేచర్ this is the fallen human nature that is being described in our fallen human nature there is a list of things that he gives he says that we walk according to the vanity of our mind being alienated from the life of god in the ignorance of them and then in the blindness of heart these are the things are the characteristics of every fallen nature and if you see it is true of every human being be it jew or be it a non jew and so we see that paul is saying to the church of ephesus which includes both jews and non jews that we were alienated from god and god who is rich in his mercy has regenerated us in christ jesus he has regenerated us which we will we see in chapter 2 which i reminded during our table time in chapter 2 verse 4 onwards we see god is rich in his mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us even when we were dead in our sins had quickened us together in christ jesus he has raised us up together and made us be sit made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus there is a regeneration that has happened we have been brought back to the life that is in christ jesus we have been brought back to by the grace of god we have been brought back to walking with god not in the vanity of our mind but in the renewing of our mind which we read in verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that's why he calls us that we have been those that are regenerated and renewed in Christ Jesus. So now, having talked about our past life in verses 17 to 19, when we talk about the past life in verses 17 to 19, we talk about the past life in verses 17 to 19, and we talk about the past life in verses 17 to 19, and we talk about the past life in verses 17 to 19, and we talk about the past life in verses 17 to 19, he gives a bridge of how we have been regenerated this is a very interesting verse 20 21 vachanallo chaala aashcharyakaramaina vishayanni manu chustam it says that we have not learned of jesus christ or we don't receive the faith in christ jesus by hearing or learning about christ even though if it is taught and preached just as they truly are you and i should be surprised because there are many other verses that on the surface seems very contradictory if you and i know romans chapter 10 verse 17 which which goes to say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, word of god we know that vishwasam annedi vinuta valana kalugunu vinuta kristuni gurchina maata valana kalugunu ani chustunnam we see that faith comes by hearing word of christ and in a contrary way paul writes here he says you and i cannot learn faith you and i cannot receive that faith even though if somebody teaches us exactly how jesus had taught and exactly how Jesus had given us in the scripture. This must be surprising to us, to some of us. But when we take a look at the scripture, we ought to understand and clearly see that there is a regeneration that needs to happen in us, which cannot be received in any kind of information or knowledge that you and I might receive. Any kind of hearing about Christ is not going to make you be a, a regenerated person. You, know, you and I might hear about Christ all through our life. 
but it is in the quickening of the Spirit of God from our sins and deadness that God would impart to us this new life that is in Christ Jesus. You and I have to be recreated and regenerated to belong to this body of Christ, to belong to Christ. It is not possible in of our own human ability to receive that life in learning it. And so we see in verses 20 and 21, Paul says, on the surface it seems contradictory, but it is not so. According to the truth of the scripture, in the necessity of our regeneration, in the necessity of, of, of us being recreated by Christ Jesus, that it is, it is only in that that you and I can have that new life. Which is why Paul says in first, Second Corinthians chapter 5, I'll close another 10 minutes quickly. Part chapter 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Jesus Christ uh, has not come to make us, make bad people good at sins. He has not come to add something as goodness to our existing life. He has come to recreate us brand new from inside out. He comes to give us a new heart. He comes to give us a new nature. He comes to make us a new creation. This you cannot receive from any other way. Neither in your own uh, revolutionized thinking or in any of the, the learning that you and I can have. It is not possible in human ability to receive this supernatural life that Christ alone can give. And so, and so if you and I have never ever had Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is for us to recognize this, that you and I can't do even a small or a big good thing to make us right with God. It is in Christ Jesus that this new life is imparted. Which is why Paul goes on to say that in verse 23, be ye renewed. There is a new creation. There is a new regeneration that has to happen in you and me. And this becomes the bridge word of our past life to our new life. Which is what we see in the rest of the portion that he kind of expands on it. Paul talks about the old life and he gives a bridge for us in verses 20, 21 and 23 of the only means that humanity has how we can move from death into life. How we can move from our old sinful dead nature to be <coughs> renewed and be made as a new creature. And so he goes on to talk about this new creation that we are in verses 21 onwards and 22 onwards. Let's read verses 22 onwards. And this is only possible, verses 22, 24, is only possible, onwards is only possible when we have that new life that we receive in Jesus Christ. Uh, we see Jesus Christ said in John chapter 11 verse 25, he says, I am life and resurrection. I am life and resurrection. He is the only one who raises somebody who is dead in sins and trespasses to have this new life. And that is why we can, we can be set free from the dominion of our old nature. We can be set free from the death of our old nature and be released into the freedom of our new nature. We can put off our old nature and we can put on our new nature. It is only possible after somebody has received this life. It is not possible in of our own human nature. The garments of sin that are tainted are so, so black, so dark, that it cannot be possible. You and I should take note of this verse that we see in the Old Testament. I want us to read this verse very quickly in this very context that we see in, in Jeremiah. Uh, can we turn our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 18? No wonder the prophet says this in the Old Testament. Verse 
verse 13, sorry, chapter 13, verse 23 and 24. 23. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. Can the Ethiopian change change his skin or the leopard his paws? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. Therefore, will I scatter them as the stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness? That's that's good enough. Here we see the important question that Jeremiah asks: Can an Ethiopian change the color of his skin? Can a leopard leopard remove his spots. That is how we are. We are not just having a cloth or robe of unrighteousness to take it off. It is our very skin and our nature, innate nature. <coughs> uh, we have the saying in our Telugu, Edukatoka Elukatoka Nakhali Yedadi Yedadi Uddikina Nalukun Nalukwekani that is where we are. Our nature innate, under the skin of our being, is to do evil. It is natural for us to do evil. It is natural for us to rebel against God. It is not natural for us to submit to the authority, to submit to the Lordship. Even after being a believer, you and I have this old nature that tries to come and being put in on of ourselves. By the way, Christians are no perfect people. When, Christi when you encounter Christians, don't expect them to be perfect. Don't expect them to be as supernatural that have come from heaven and are going to have some uh, angelic way of talking and angelic nature. They are just the same fallen human natures who have been redeemed and have this new life. They have not been completely made perfect as in the way that Jesus is going to consummate us. He's going to make us like himself as we are being sanctified in this journey of life. But having said so, there is an imperative or a command that flows. Having been renewed with the new nature, the beauty of a Christian life is that the dominion of old nature is destroyed. The sin's authority and power is completely destroyed. The shackles of sin are broken. They have no power over a Christian. But yet, there could be some old, there, there is an old nature. But we need to constantly, by the power of the Spirit of God, put on the new nature and put off the old nature. And that God wouldn't force us to do, but by the Spirit of God, He would transform us to do by the renewing of our mind through the Spirit of God, which is what is the crux of this passage. In verse 23 we read, And be renewed in the mind, in the spirit of your mind. Your mind. It happens constantly as the word of God is being proclaimed. There is a conforming of our old nature to the submission to the new nature that we have been given by the renewing of our mind. It happens as we are being exposed to the truths of God's word. And that is why it is vital for us to be exposed to the word of God. It is vital for us to grow together in Christ Jesus. And so quickly, I won't uh, go so much more on expanding, but for concluding, we see that being regenerated with this new life, I have an image which I drew as I was learning this scripture portion, but uh, I'm sure we cannot get to look at all of these. God willing, we will look at it some other time. But I want to give us this crux. In verse 23 and 24, we read. Let's read verse 23 and 24 and close. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Neethi yu yadhartamayna bhaktiyu galavare devani polikaga srishtipu padina 
నవీన స్వభావంను ధరించుకున్నవలను వీఆర్ బీ యూర్ బీయింగ్ కమాండెడ్ అండ్ ఆస్ట్ టు పుట్ ఆన్ దిస్ న్యూ మ్యాన్ విచ్ ఆఫ్టర్ గాడ్ ఈస్ క్రియేటెడ్ ఇన్ రైచియస్నెస్ ఇన్ ట్రూ హోలీనెస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఛాలెంజ్ దట్ యాజ్ క్రిస్టియన్స్ యూ అండ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ ఈజ్ దట్ వీ ఆర్ కాల్ టు దిస్ క్రియేట్ హై కాలేజ్ to image god to be those that would reflect god's image in this world in putting on the new nature all that we are doing is we are being made little christ to show forth christ into this world to live as christ lived to walk as christ walked to talk as christ talked and to reflect his image in this world and that's what we have been made see we are not being asked to do something we have not been made you been you and i have been made as new creatures to image god we have been recreated in his image by the way when god created us he made us in the image of himself devudu aadilo maanam chesinappudu tana poliga choppuna tana swarupamlo aina maanam cheskunnadu మానవుడు పాపమునకు దాసుడిగా ఆ యొక్క రూపమును ఆ యొక్క పోలికను పోయి మరి పాప స్వభావంలో పాపాకారంలో మానవుడు జీవించుండగా అట్టి పాపాకారంలో ఉన్న మానవుని విమోచింప ప్రభు అయిన యేస్సు ఈ లోకానికి వచ్చి కలువరి సెలవుల్లో నీ నా కొరకు వ్యసనాకాంతుడిగా మరి ఆ పాపం యొక్క భారమంతయు భరించి రూపం పోయి పోయిన వారిగా మరి మలచబడి తదనంతరం నీకు నాకు ఆయన యొక్క నూతన స్వభావం ఆయన యొక్క పోలిక తిరిగి మనకి ఇవ్వటానికి ఇష్టపడుచు ఉన్నాడు విచ్ ఈస్ వై వి సి దట్ ఇన్ క్రైస్ట్ యు హ్ ఆల్రెడీ బీన్ మేడ్ ఇన్ రీక్రియేటెడ్ టు ఇమేజ్ గాడ్ టు ఇమేజ్ జీసస్ క్రైస్ట్ అండ్ దట్స్ వై పాల్ సే ఐ జస్ట్ బిగిన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద పోర్షన్ బట్ గాడ్ బిలింగ్ విల్ కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు ఇట్ విచ్ ఈస్ వై ఇన్ ఎఫిషియన్స్ చాప్టర్ ఫైవ్ i leave verses 25 to 32 which is what i summarized in one statement that we are to speak as christ spoke that we are to walk as christ walked that we are to live as christ lived that is what is the summary of verses 25 to 32 and which is why which is what he concludes in verse chapter 5 verse 1 he says be ye followers of god as dear children కావున మీరు ప్రియులైన పిల్లల వలె దేవుని పోలి నడుచుకొనిడి అని చెప్పి పిలుపునిస్తున్నట్టుగా మనం చూస్తున్నాం వీ లుక్ అట్ దట్ పోర్షన్ సమ్ అదర్ టైమ్ యాజ్ ద లాడ్ లీడ్స్ బట్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద హై కాలింగ్ గాడ్ హెస్ గివెన్ అస్ దిస్ ఈస్ ద ఛాలెంజ్ ఐ యూ అండ్ ఐ ఇమేజింగ్ గాడ్ ఇన్ ద న్యూనెస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ లైఫ్ దట్ వీ హీన్ రీక్రియేటెడ్ విత్ ఆర్ ఆర్ యూ అండ్ ఐ ఇమేజింగ్ అవర్ ఓన్ సెల్ఫ్ ది ఓల్డ్ సెల్ఫ్ ది ఓల్డ్ మ్యాన్ that walks according to the lusts of this world and the lusts of the flesh it's easy to compromise and to walk according to the old man but to strive and to yield over to the spirit of god who renews us helps us to image christ it is a challenge may it be so that we would image christ in a manner that is appropriate to this high calling devudu man ichina ఈ అత్యున్నతమైన పిలుపునకు తగినట్టుగా మనం జీవించడానికి అందుకనే పెప్సిల్ రాసిన పత్రిక నాలుగు మొదటి మూడు వచనాల్లో ప్రభు మనకి ఇచ్చిన ఉన్నతమైన పిలుపునకు తగినట్టుగా నడుచుకున్న వాళ్ళని కోసలేని పౌలంచు క్రీస్ తేస్ యొక్క స్వరూపంలో మనం చేయబడి ఉంటుండగా ఆయన యొక్క ఆయన యొక్క పోలికలో ఈ లోకంలో నడుచుటకు ఈ లోకంలో జీవించటకు పరిశుద్ధ దేవుడు మనకి సాధించని కాదు ఆమె ప్రార్థన చేసుకున్నా పరిశుద్ధమైన ఈ పరలోకం తండ్రి ఈ సాయంకాలంలో మీ యొక్క జీవన గల మాటలను సార్వత్రిక స్థానిక సంఘం యొక్క ఈ సంకల్పములను గమనించి నాయన మరి మా యొక్క ప్రాచీన స్వభావం ముందు పాత పురుషుని వలె మేము జీవించక మా ప్రభు మీ చిత్త వృత్తి ఎందు నూతన పరచబడిన వారే నవీన స్వభావం ధరించుకొని క్రీస్తు కోలికలో జీవించుకున్న ఆ యొక్క పిలుపును 
పొందుకున్న వారమై మరి మా ప్రభ మీ సంఖ్యలో ఉంటున్న మమ్మల్ని జ్ఞాపకం చేసుకున్నమని దయగలతండి మీ ప్రేమకు మీ యొక్క కృపకు ఆయన మాలో మీరు చేసిన యొక్క మా ప్రభు నూతనమైన సృష్టి కార్యములకు తగినట్టుగా మా జీవితాలు మా యొక్క సంభాషణ మా యొక్క మాట మా యొక్క నడక నిత్యము ఉండగలటకు మీరే మమ్మల్ని కృపలో బలపరచమని అనుదినము మీకు వాక్యం చే నూతనపరచమని మా ప్రభు అని యొక్క ఆత్మ చే మమ్మల్ని రూపాంతరపరిచి మహిమ పరుచుకున్నమని మీ దయగల స్థాయికి మనం చెప్పించు మీ యొక్క వాక్యాన్ని మా జీవితాల్లో ఫలింపచేయమని యేసు క్రీస్తు పరిషత్ నామంలో ప్రార్థించి వేడుకుంచినా అంతే